How you doing? I got a little bit of sniffles. Picked it up from my uh, grandchildren who are little petri dishes, but not feeling too bad. Just got a little. So I'm sucking on a cough drop, if you haven't noticed, and and uh, that keeps me from, you know, coughing. <laughs> Well, how have you been? Have you been stitching away or have you been just laying low? I have um, been having a grand time uh, just doing this and that. I've been working in the yard and um, thinking about camping this fall. So getting ready for that and pretty much just hanging around in the beehive. I uh, spent last weekend at a cross-stitch retreat which was absolutely fabulous and so if you're interested in sticking your toe in the cross-stitch well, sign up for newsletter at Acorns and Threads. They, um, there's just so much. Uh, I think uh, anytime I do anything with my hands it makes me relax, you know, whether it be embroidery, quilting. I've been working on my One Block Wonder quilt. I um, have been planning all kinds of uh, fall and winter projects. I've also been working on um, organization for when I'm camping. If I'm, uh, I'm a far more peaceful camper <laughs> if I'm organized. And the one way that I get organized is my Yazzie bags. Those are the ones that travel with me when I go camping because they are made out of a, um, a tough uh, polyester um, fabric and originally Yazzie was a travel bag in terms of uh, jewelry and product that you might want to take, but she has way expanded into the uh, crafty hand stitching. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show you a couple of my, the bags that I'm taking with me when I do go camping. This, uh, and I'll, I'll put the link to Yazzie bags, but you can kind of look through their catalog. I don't know the, um, specific number. But this particular one, look how flat it is. This one sits over the armchair because when it unfolds it opens, it puffs up and it sits on an armchair so that you have a pocket, a box, and another pocket. And it folds up into a nice little wallet size. So I decided I'm going to take that one because I can, um, when I'm stitching, I can hang it over um, the chair or table. The other one that I'm taking is this particular one. It looks like a purple briefcase, doesn't it? And the reason I'm taking this, and you, you know, when you look at the catalog, you can decide what what fits your needs. But this one... <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It was, it's not huge, but it fit the small one too. I love this baby one. So this baby one is one that I have one project in, and that is the corn, um, the Indian corn um, project that I'm doing. And then I am, I prepped and worked on getting this particular project. This is a Kathy Schmitz project. I prepped that and put all the Valdani threads in there. And so, and the thing about this project, if you, uh, you know, I'm not making excuses for myself, but what I am telling you is that when I look at a project, I look for shortcuts because I um, I have so many things that I want to do. I just have so many things. And so I tend to look for shortcuts. And if you look at this project, this is a needle case. 
she hand stitched all of that background fabric in a cross hatch. And in my mind, I was thinking, there there used to be a fabric called Sandcastle. Uh, and so I was hunting for that and finally found it at um, Mill End in uh, the Portland area. And they do do mail order, just so you know. But what was interesting is when I went in there, I um, asked if they had Sandcastle. And out of all the clerks there, there was only one who knew exactly what I was talking about. And she went over and found the bolt for me. It was amazing. So I, um, I got my project traced onto the Sandcastle. And I will show you what I used to trace. So it already looks stitched in the background, so I don't have to do all that cross hatching. Yeah. So the thread, the project, the needles, everything is fitting in this um, this Yazzy bag. And someday I'll decorate the outside of it. It's not a big one. Um, I would guess that it's probably 12 by 10. But these are sturdy. These are sturdy. So I'm going to walk you over. Hopefully you won't get too diz dizzy. I'm going to walk you over and um, I'm going to show you how I've been prepping. Uh, I joined the group on Facebook um, called Wool Applique, in which Julie Kursavi is um, the mentor of that. So let's see if I can find it. Let's see. And and I had, you know, I belonged to her fa her Facebook group that had to do with cross stitch, but for whatever reason, um, uh, I just didn't realize <laughs> that she also had one for wool applique, and um, and what when I was coming across. I was like blown away because there was a there was a free pattern and isn't that pattern just adorable so I immediately joined the group and um, it's a freebie pattern and when you join the group you can download the freebie pattern and there are kits available and I'll show you what I did um, but I just thought it was absolutely lovely. And so if you go under Wool Applique on Facebook, and Julie Kursave is the mentor of that group, uh, you can join if you're interested. Okay, so let's head over to my cutting table. Hang on. <laughs> So this is my cutting table. It was G's old, when he first um, started working, he was a cartographer and this was his drafting table. And it used to, the, this used to tip up so it would be at, like an, at an angle, but he um, went ahead and attached it permanently for me and then painted it and refinish the top. And this has traveled, oh, well, 40 some years it's been a part of my life. <laughs> it used to be out in our barn till I started uh, crafting. So I went ahead and I joined the group Wool Applique on Facebook so that I could get this pattern, um, which was a free download by Red Door, my Red Door Designs. I just loved it, and so I um, I didn't choose to 
buy the kit because I have a ton of wool. And I thought, that's just, come on, Anna. So what I did was I found online the toweling, and that was by, um, you can look at that, buying to buy stitches on Etsy. And I bought some toweling. And then I started pulling my wool. And my wool scraps, the way I store them, is in these little bins. Now the big pieces of wool, the like uh, quarter yards or more, are stored in these containers, these pull-out drawers. But I save every little scrap of wool and I put them in these buckets according to colors. So this bucket here is like blue and purple. This is brown and, and gold, white and black, purple and red, and, uh, and then there's some more brown and black down there. I'm lucky, we don't have a moth problem here, and I know some of you in different parts of the world or country might have a um, moth problem, but uh, I have also in the past put uh, lavender in there because it's opened. Yeah, look at that. So many fun things here. So many fun things. Uh, this place just makes me smile. So, um, what I did was I looked at the colors and I pulled the scraps. And this is why I save every little scrap because Everything costs so much now, and it just keeps going up and up and up. So I uh, have always saved the little pieces because I can get about three, three leaves out of this chunk. And this actually was a piece that was off of a, a jacket from like Goodwill. Still has the trim on it. And, you know, there, I can't stress enough that just saving every little piece. I, so I pulled all of the wool for this project out of that scrap box. Now, when I prep, I use soft fuse in a tube. And I always keep it back in the plastic it came wrapped in because after a while, if you're not using it quickly enough, it can lose its stickum. And that is an official word. But there was a scrap in there big enough to put all the pieces on. So this little piece was a scrap piece that... Um, was just big enough for my project. The table I use for my light table in which I traced this off the pattern is called a miso table. I absolutely love this. I've had it for 20 years. It is um, simple. It's not fancy. It's simple. And the things that I like about that is that this piece here, just kind of the light part of it, just kind of moves around and you can make the top or the bottom light. And that the table is elevated so I'm not bending over when I'm tracing. And it came with all these clips so I could clip the um, paper down or when I'm tracing on fabric, clip the fabric down and I just tape on here and then take it back off. And I will put the link for this table. Um, I have been a big supporter of this family owned business. And let's see, there it is. So stop the video and just Go online and look for this, miso.com.
So we're going to go over here to my ironing board. And my ironing board is um, a second hand. This was like a butler's uh, cabinet. You know, it originally two sides folded out so you could put like potluck or um, t um, dishes or glasses when you're serving uh, a group of people. But we attached it permanently. And then the big board is uh, was made by a young man over in Sisters, but it's pretty much just a piece of plywood. But this is sanded underneath. And then I put a batting and muslin and I've I've stapled the muslin underneath and I've done that several times. So here is my piece of toweling and on the back of the toweling I attached I cut it to the size that it said and I attached on the back of it some black um, SF 101 which is a fusible interfacing and that way it kind of gives it a little more stability and then I didn't feel the need to to do anything to the edge because I feel like this is going to be perfect uh, like it is. So the next step will be to fold this in half and then fuse fuse my wool pieces with the soft fuse and then lay them out on here how I like them. So we'll take a look at that here in a second. So you see how I put the pieces onto the wool and even though it says don't use steam, I have done this a gazillion times. I steam the, uh, the paper pieces, make sure the sticky side is down and then I flip these over and steam from the back side and I have yet to have a problem with that and I travel um, both in the van and flying and have never lost a piece off of a project. So that is how, and as you can see, I just kind of fit the piece to the scrap that I have because I don't want to waste any of the wool. Um, the most wonderful thing about this designer, and that is, um, come on over here, is uh, my red door designs is I love love the fact that she has already reversed the images so all you have to do is trace them onto your um, soft fuse and you're ready to go no trying to flip it and figure it out or putting it up to a window this designer by far it has done half the work so now I'm going to uh, be cutting the pieces out and then um, we'll arrange them onto the toweling and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. In the meantime, we shall cut these out and have a, another conversation. Well, I thought we'd just sit here while I cut these out and just have a nice visit. So I have all my pieces here and I'm using today Karen K. Buckley scissors. They are um, ser very finely serrated, and so they cut through wool like butter. And as you can see, I have all these little pieces of wool that I saved, and so now I'm just going to cut everything out. Oh my, these scissors are fabulous. So how have you guys been doing? What's the weather like where you're at? I know um, the other side of the globe is heading towards spring, and this week we're going to have the first day of fall. And I know there's been all kinds of things on the Internet about it's not fall until September 23rd, and so don't bring out the pumpkin stuff. I could have pumpkin. I especially love pumpkin lattes. Oh my gosh. They are so yummy. Yep. I tried to grow um, pumpkins in my yard because I thought it'd be fun for my grandsons and they never took. I, I'm not sure what I did wrong but 
they just never took I am just finishing up a book uh, called The Year of Yes as um, recommended uh, by a friend of mine um, by Chandra, Chandra Rhymes. She is a writer. Of course, I think the writer's strike is still going on, so probably not currently working, but she's written a lot of uh, blockbuster shows, the scripts. And the book is about um, her journey and um, the year of yes. So I kind of took it to be like I would, I, I tend to want to talk myself out of things. Um, I know everyone thinks I'm this extroverted person, but there's a part of me that just wants to hunker down in my beehive and just um, create things that I'm interested in. Not necessarily finish, but uh, but create things and um, yeah. But I, I have to admit, I do, uh, I do like to socialize, but I know my limitations. How about you? I often wonder, I think my dad, I always thought of my dad as an extrovert. But I think there might have been a part of him very much like me that just needed to be in a quiet space because he would get up. I, I tell you, it didn't matter what time of the morning I got up, he'd already be up and quietly be reading. Um, he was a, a ferocious reader. I mean, we had stacks of books everywhere, and he had a very eclectic um, reading, uh, his likes. He was always trying to figure out a way to navigate the world and improve himself. So a lot of the books were like self-help books and and my mother, she had a genius IQ. So most of the books she read were books on <coughs> how to do something. She wasn't much of a fiction writer, although um, she did love pro book books. Um, I remember those being in our in our um, library. And so I have a wide variety of books. I like both. Uh, I'm drawn to those books that are like um, how to make improvements or um, how to grow oneself emotionally. I majored in uh, behavioral psychology when I was in college and got a degree in that. Um, but I, I never wanted to be a therapist. Um, Although now I would love, to, I wish I had done it. I wish I had done it. But I'm, I'm kind of like a a, um, a quilting therapist, aren't I? <laughs> so yeah, I would recommend the Year of Yes. I think that would be. Uh, so far, my top two books are um, The Measure and Mad Honey. Those are my top two books for this year, although I've read some others that I've enjoyed very much. But I would say um, those were the, one, hold the one and two spot. I haven't seen anything worth watching on 
television or worth renting, you know, we have the uh, option. Look at how beautiful that wool is. Isn't that so cool? Once I get these all cut out, I will um, lay them out on the toweling and um, before I fuse them on, because that's the best part is that you can kind of lay things out and overlap them or tuck them under and decide if you like the look of it before you actually um, fuse them down. And then they're in place for you to stitch. And generally on my wool projects, I either buttonhole stitch or whip stitch. And a whip stitch is basically a buttonhole stitch without the little um, straight edge. I so appreciate um, that uh, that the designer went ahead and reversed the images so I didn't have to think about it. I can remember many times <laughs> in previous years not being able to figure out or having to reverse everything and it was such a pain. Well, I'm going to cut these letters out. And then be able to fuse them on there. If you've never tried wool before, I encourage you to give it um, a try. There is something very organic, um, you know, like with quilting, unless you're a, a um, art quilter, you know, your pieces, it's all about precision and getting the corners to match up with, um, with wool, especially um, uh, the more primitive designs which I would uh, put this one into that category. Um, there is no wrong to it. You know, it's, it's the, one of the most relaxing um, Because you're just doing a buttonhole or a whip stitch to kind of get it tacked down. And I always say if you make a mistake, it's primitive anyway. So now when you get into the wool um, world of Seuss Bargo, that has a little bit more of um, precision in stitching in the stitches. Um, but it's it's folk in its own way, but the stitching is using a, a variety of uh, stitches and a variety of threads. Generally, with this type of stitching, you're going to be matching the thread to the color of the background. These scissors are just amazing. K. Buckley. Karen K. Buckley. I haven't done a quilt uh, retreat in a long time as far as like going to like a Silomar, um I've done that uh, two or three times and it's such a wonderful um, experience because you're you're um, not only seeing the who's who of the quilting world but um, you learn stuff that you maybe wouldn't have done before, you know. And 
I've been lately, ever since I watched The Blue Zone, I, I kind of moved towards that um, mindset. I started moving towards that mindset um, this last year, but after watching The Blue Zone, I thought to myself, um, it's good to challenge your brain. It's good to challenge your body. So the other day, Greg um, G asked me, um, do you uh, want one of those uh, magnet things to pick up uh, all the cars that the grandkids leave around? the Hot Wheel cars, <clears throat> and I said, no, I actually want to keep bending over. I I think that that is a good thing for me, is I'm finding that I appreciate the ability to move my body as long as I can, and so I'm not looking at it as a chore. Um, I'm looking at it as kind of like housework Pilates. How's that? I made a new term, housework Pilates. Because um, the more we stop doing things, the more we can't do things. And um, and I feel that way about my quilting too. I, I bought some fabric. Uh, I went to um, mill end here in Portland and because I mainly wanted to um, find some sandcastle fabric and I thought oh they might be when I went to other shops they didn't know what I was talking about so I thought maybe at mill end they would and as I told you before yes in fact there was someone there that knew exactly um, so that day uh, G and I, uh, he had an errand to run, and I went along with him because um, he said we could go to Bob's Red Mill. If you're familiar with Bob's Red Mill, um, you probably see it in your grocery store. It's actually the headquarters uh, is here, and um, and there actually is a storefront a Bob's Red Mill storefront that is so cool because you can buy all the Bob Red Mill food items and then um, they have cute things like decorator things and dishes and stuff like that but you can also uh, it was packed when we went and it turned out because it was ten dollar all you can eat pancake day and so a lot of people go there there's a restaurant there and um, uh, so we went there to get um, some egg replacer because we don't eat eggs. Um, we need a product uh, that uh, replaces eggs when we bake. And so Bob Red Mill makes that. And um, it's a fun place to go to because it's very, it's kind of like a big red barn with a water wheel and uh, the whole thing. So we went there first. And then, um, then since we were really close to Mill End, I said, Let, uh, can we stop there? Because I, I need to get, see if they have this fabric. Well, <coughs> you can't just go into a fabric store. Well, maybe you can. I, on the other hand, cannot go into a fabric store and just get the fabric that I um, was going in for. Um, and Mill End actually has, it's just one of those stores. We used to have another one that was called Fabric Depot. It was so fabulous. Literally carried every fabric that was made out there. And um, so, um, I ended up picking up some other fabric, and I will show it to you after we get these fused. Okay. 
So now, we are ready to take this little pile, this little pile of cut out motifs, and fuse it to the toweling. So come along with me. So as you can see, I folded the toweling in half because that I will seam this. Once I've stitched all of this on, I will seam this closed on the sewing machine and then I'll put a pillow form. I'll make a pillow form and you can see that they did two button tacks to close the end. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that, but I laid everything out. I peeled all the paper backing off and so at this point you can move these around. They're not stuck down and you kind of have a template to figure out how you want to lay them out and you can move them, you can still move them around because they're not um, secured yet. And so I'm pretty much liking the way that is. Pumpkins. Isn't that cute? So I'm going to go over here. This is my absolute favorite iron. It is a Panasonic cordless. And I am going to just start fusing it down. And you know, if something, the way I, I decide to stitch this is I tend to do the smallest pieces first, so if they start lifting, and if something small on top is going to secure something bigger on the bottom, then I tend to secure that first. And many a time I've been in an airport and seen like a leaf that was starting to lift up, well that's the one that I stitch down first. So you can see these are all stuck now. See they're not moving. And then I will open this up and I'm going to steam it from the back side. I um, attached the um, SF-101, I cut it to just inside this uh, where the edging of the toweling was um, folded, so I wouldn't have to deal with that. Okay, now it's all ready for stitching down. And so when I take this camping, it'll be a peaceful, no-brainer kind of stitch. Um, and then when I come back, I will put right sides together and sew this seam closed, find a pillow form that will fit in here, and then put a couple buttons. Isn't that cute? And it looks like there's some embellishment stitches along here. So I'll take the pattern with me whenever we do go. Um, because then, and I'm telling you, I'm not necessarily, I don't necessarily put exactly what is on here. I'm not, that's not how I roll. It's primitive. So I just stitch freehand and start putting the stuff in as I see it. And you know, with um, with these little yellow berries, you can actually put buttons if you didn't want to stitch them. 
I love the the wool that I chose. It's all from scrap. This one looks really cool in the camera, doesn't it? Oh gosh, that's one of my favorites. Okay, so we'll move around the beehive here to come over to the cutting table again and I'll show you the fabric that I picked up. So besides the sandcastle, I was feeling the Halloween and the, so I saw this, uh, I just got a half a yard of each because I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it but I love steampunk and look at that, isn't that the coolest? And this is, um, let's see, does it even say on here? Um, no, I didn't get the piece with the actual um, fabric manufacturer. But you could call um, Mill End. Look at these. Aren't they cool? I feel like I bought this piece before. <laughs> oh, here this one has, so it's probably all the same. Uh, that first piece and this piece says Dan Morris Designs for QT Fabrics. Oh, I just love that. And then I saw this piece and I mean, really. Is that not gorgeous? Well, the gal cutting this fabric for me said, did you see the other piece that's similar to that with a different colorway? No, but I shall take some. Look at that. Isn't that the best? This is Alexander Henry. Of course it is. Who else would make fabric that fantastic? And then this piece here, The Wicked Times. I mean, oh, I just love this. Um, and this is by All Rights Reserved. Oh, Timeless Treasures. Fabrics of Soho. Perfect. And then the last piece. Oh my gosh. Is that not beautiful? Let's see. This is by Andover. Andover Fabric. And I was taught by Jen Kingwell that these little fabric dots denote each fabric die that is in this one piece of fabric. So you could take this little strip if you didn't want to take the fabric with you, you could take this little strip and get complementary pieces. But, um, yeah, amazing, absolutely amazing. Well, I hope that was a nice little visit to the beehive for you. I know it was for me. I enjoyed uh, knowing that I was uh, able to share some of the things that I love about wool. Um, I have not heard from the winner of the Jolly Books or the uh, Fat Quarter gift certificate. So... If you could double check back, otherwise we'll have to do it again. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I haven't heard from them. I kind of, I know I kind of go, did I? Didn't I? I am so disorganized. I am so sorry. But, um, yes. So, hope you enjoy yourself um, these fall days and that I'll have some stitching to show you 
the next time we meet.